Hey guys, Unfrequented World. Out in the bush, deep behind my place, we are actually more to the west than we usually go. So I don't have any skidoo trails in here. I thought it would be cool just to take the dog for a walk. It gets pretty thick back here, nobody comes back here. And we check out some stick structures and just take the dog for a walk and I'll show you guys some deep, dark forest back here. So today's my birthday and I usually go out and do photography but today I thought I would just do a bit of squatching. I like quiet time in the bush. It's 44th today so it's a twin number and I'm a twin. So I'm sharing my 44th which is my twin number with my daughter who is 11. It's so it's her twin number as well. Her birthday was a month ago. So I told her every 11 years we'll share our twin birthdays. So I'm a twin and my mom was a twin. So we don't take the twin thing lightly. And as we get further back here, closer to the wet marsh portion, the ground turns to a heavy, thick sphagnum moss. And there's a whole forest of it back here. very soft and in some places it's almost waist deep. I still haven't tested the drone since it crash landed in the backyard in January so we have to get that out and test it as well. What's he freaking out about? Nope, 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 come here. Come here. Gage. 
Come here. Look what he found, guys. Yeah, we don't have poisonous snakes. But I don't know what kind that is. Come on. This way. This way. So there you have it. It's weird enough that he doesn't do it very often. When he freaks out like that, I know there's something going on. In that case, we could explain it. A great big snake sunning itself here in the moss. Cool, explainable. But I have seen him that one other time in the winter video. Freaked out for no re well, a reason I couldn't figure out anyway. So I always keep my eye on him. He lets me know what's around. We took a look at this one here in the winter, guys. I thought we'd just come back. We can see it better now with the snow and everything gone. It's weird that there's two of them broken here together. Right beside each other. Why? What? And this one looks like it was twisted. Just... I find this one really odd. Out of the hundred that we look at, that one to me is one of the odder ones. There's nothing left to this. It's not like it was just bent over and it broke. It's like twisted. Look at the damage to that thing. Flattened right out. I don't know. The top one just looks like a clean break, like a snap, you know? That's, that's nine feet up there. This one here is, you know, seven feet and here's a look from the other side look at that it's it's hard to describe but it's it's not just broken off it's it's twisted and then one last strange thing that I'm noticing here is this stick right here is over top of this downed branch. But it's still attached to this tree up here. So how did this branch come down and this one's on top? Shouldn't it be, <laughs> shouldn't this be underneath that one? Shouldn't that one have come down knocking this down? It's still attached, it's broken, but it's still attached. Weird. I thought we caught some pretty compelling audio in the last parabolic video that we put up. There were some distant screams or something. I don't know what it was. Sometimes guys online say that it sounds like traffic in the background. Anything is possible, guys. Sound carries and travels in a weird way, but... Normally at 1 o'clock in the morning when we're doing these recordings, we shouldn't pick up too many sounds of screeching tires, things in the background. And sometimes when you're there, you know you've pointed the dish back in the bush or you've left it at the edge of the swamp in the case of the last video. I know that's further out. We're not right at the house there. There should be even less human sounds. So what are they? And today we're actually doing two cameras set up again. Uh, even though I brought the Femi back, I realized, hey, the GoPro with the stabilization it has does just as good a job. I've hooked up a couple mounts here. And so we can run the GoPro 7 on top of the camcorder. And you guys can see me as well as what's going on out there. So, you know, I'm not pulling any, you know, uh, 
fishing line if a tree's moving or something. I don't know. <laughs> Not that there would be, but, uh, and we also have a GoPro 6, which I forgot to get out today, but we can put on backwards and film behind us. So we can still do our three camera setup and moving forward, that's what we're going to implement. I hope this is nice and steady. I think that the GoPro 7 has pretty good stabilization, so. I get a lot of emails from you guys where you're meticulously going through the footage frame by frame and sending me uh, pictures and time loops and stamps. Check this out, check that out. Awesome, I appreciate it. And I do check out all of them. There isn't anything I've found in there that's definitive, so. But if I do find something really strange, if we find something in the background that actually moves and it's not just a little stump away back in the distance or something dark that, you know, could be a stump or which is 98% chance of what it is. But if we find something that moves or just looks so squatchy that I have to show it, I will. So guys, keep sending me that stuff. I appreciate you taking the time to analyze the footage. That's why I'm out here walking around. All of the eyes that are looking, you know, when I'm filming, I'm concentrating on am I in focus? Is the lighting okay? Can you see me? Can you see what I'm pointing the camera at? I'm not fully engaged with what's going on around me, which is the case with 99% of these guys out filming in the woods, right? We can't focus in on everything. A hundred of you guys watch that video, there's a good chance that somebody's going to pick up something if it moves or off to the side that we just didn't catch. So I appreciate you guys taking the time to help me analyze all that footage. So Tom keeps talking about wanting to come back here and just bring a tent, a couple sleeping bags, and uh, him and I coming out here to the swamp and spending a night. Tom has heard the screaming as well around our place, so he knows there's something here. We just want to see if we can get it on film. You know, is it the fox? Is it something else? And uh, so he's volunteered to come back here to the swamp with me. So we're going to find a dry spot in the next couple weeks. The ground is still thawing out. And that's the plan. We're going to come back here and spend a night. Really? Nope. Come on, buddy. <laughs> Out of the water. Come on. Come on. We still have snow. We still have frost in the bush. Actually, believe it or not, there is still patches of snow. So I'm not getting out in the tent yet. I'm not getting out my sleeping bag just yet. But in the next month here, right in time to be eaten alive by mosquitoes and black flies, we'll start getting out and start traveling with the channel. And I think we're going to at least go till the end of this summer, looking for evidence and doing as many trips, canoe trips, boating trips, uh, old growth forest. I got some places I want to go and up to Brian's camp. It has to be done before this series is over. The whole point of me doing this series was to, uh, to face my fear and that means spending the night up there. I don't know if I can do it alone. I'm going to try my darndest to get somebody to go with me. But before this series ends, that's probably how we're going to end it, is Gary will spend a night up in the bush at Brian's camp. So that will be at the end of this summer. Stay tuned for that. After that, guys, I don't know. I don't know what's in store for the channel, right? We're always changing it up. But for now, we're still on the hunt. Thanks for watching, guys.